Hey, what's up everyone? It's Ben from Profixer, and we have on the bench today an iPhone 7 Plus. This one was mailed to us from a from a, from another shop, um, and it's for suspected audio IC issues. The way you can confirm that is just go into the voice memos, try to record a message, and it will probably tell you recording failed, no audio device is found. That's basically the dead giveaway symptom that you're having audio IC issues and that uh, that you need that replaced. This particular phone actually took about five minutes to boot. It uh, it took forever to boot, and uh, and that's another one too. That basically, if uh, it takes a really long time to boot and gets stuck on the Apple logo, but still has home button feedback, then audio IC issue is pretty likely. Um, so after testing all of those things, you know it's a pretty much dead giveaway that it's audio IC. So um, we go ahead and pull the board and get it prepared to remove the actual audio IC chip. We add some flux, use some hot air, and carefully use our tweezers to remove this particular chip. You do have to be careful because baseband is right on the other side. If you overheat it um, as far as too hot a temperature or for too long, you can actually float the audio ice or the uh, baseband, which will then result in uh, service issues. So you do have to be careful of that. That is something uh, that you have to make sure that uh, you're skilled enough to take on this job because uh, that could happen. Uh, but what we do on here is after we remove the chip and uh, prepped all the pads with new solder, we go ahead and uh, scrape the trace. Basically, C12 is uh, the main one. That's the one I was working on first there. And C12 basically becomes severed, even microscopically. You probably couldn't even see it if we zoomed in on the microscope. But, uh, but it basically becomes severed or damaged in a way where it's not communicating correctly with the chip itself. And so we get that error trying to do voice memos. Um, so what we do is we're in a jumper. Basically, we recreate that trace that uh, that is suspected to be damaged. And we do that with this uh, really thin jumper wire. And uh, we attach it directly to the trace itself and up to the edge of the component. Then we cut it right there at that second line, um, at line number 11, um, to kind of get the correct length on these. Uh, but maskless jumpers is what I'm doing here. That's where you scrape the trace and... Uh, you actually adhere or solder the jumper wire itself to the trace and to the edge of the component, and you don't use any kind of UV mask. These are a lot more secure in my experience uh, because uh, um, I'll actually show you in a minute um, after we've put these jumpers on here, uh, these things really stay in place uh, without needing any type of uh, mask on them. Uh, so after we've placed all the all the little pieces there to create the jumpers. We then coil it around, and this lets it um, stay in place even better because uh, it circles around uh, that pad itself, and so it kind of gives it a little bit of an anchor, and we'll go back and touch those with a soldering iron to hold those in. So all these we do that for. We, we uh, coiled it around, and this one in particular is that one that I was referencing. So you'll see here there's a lot of solder on the pad right now, and I want to kind of reduce that a little bit, so I kind of dab it away, but I lift the jumper itself. So the jumper is now sitting sideways, not in the spot that it should, but I'm able to reheat it, touch it again, and push it back onto the trace itself. That would not be able to be done with a traditional jumper if you're just butting it up against the component and then plan to put mask on it. It would have, um, you know, stuck directly to the soldering iron tip pretty quickly. Uh, but these, because you have the exposed trace, it uh, it does help to pull those um, new jumpers in, which is uh, which is really nice. Um, so then, whenever you hit it with hot air later, you don't have to worry about those jumpers um, becoming dislodged or sliding underneath the chip and bridging any kind of pads. And so the next one that we do is uh, you got to prepare the chip um, after you've inspected the chip to make sure that it looks good. Um, you want to remove that solder and add you know your regular leaded solder. And then go ahead and place your reballing stencil over the top. And basically the reballing stencil has all these little cutouts in it that allow you to put solder paste directly on the, uh, the pads of the chip itself. Then you heat it with hot air. And the hot air basically melts the solder paste and creates little balls on those pads. And then that way, the connection that this has with the board is through those little solder balls there. And the chip is kind of suspended in air, and the only thing that's touching the board is going to be the uh, the, the solder joints itself. Um, so 
Um, so if you've done it uh, correctly, you should have all even pads now on the chip itself. You should have a properly prepped board and uh, properly placed jumpers. And so you can go ahead and put your uh, new chip on there, or the same chip actually, that's revolved. And uh, note the orientation of it and uh, get it centered. And then you'll uh, place it using hot air. And uh, this is a pretty uh, pretty simple process. You just want to make wait until the chip settles and then bump the corner to make sure that it returns back to square. And uh, then you know that you've had su sufficient heat and that it's uh, soldered correctly on all the on all the solder joints itself. Um, but afterwards, go ahead and clean it up. Uh, drip some alcohol in there, blow it off, scrub it with a toothbrush, whatever you need to do to get it clean. And uh, just make sure that it's spotless. You don't want to leave any flux on the board itself. And go ahead and assemble uh, the board. Go ahead and put it back in the same housing that it should be in, of course, and uh, attach all of the peripherals, uh, like all the microphones and the buttons and things like that, to make sure everything's communicating properly. And now if you see we're booting this, and uh, this is not um, sped up at all. This is actually regular speed on the video, but it's going to boot much quicker than it, than it uh, did before. We didn't show the previous boot because it literally took about five minutes to boot. Uh, but this one uh, definitely boots much quicker. It's under a minute, which is nice. And so now you want to go ahead and test voice memos itself. And, uh, and you'll see here that when you hit the record button, that it actually allows you to record. It doesn't give you any kind of error message, which is, uh, which is really nice. And everything you see here, we teach in much greater detail in our online, at your own pace, board mastery micro soldering course. We cover everything to take you from being a complete beginner to carrying out these repairs expertly for your customers in your own repair shop. We give you all the answers and specifics and breakdowns of the steps for the repairs so that you and your team can easily implement this as a profitable service into your repair shop. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and check out the link in the description. I'll check you on the next repair. See you later.